on the, the warmest water by at least three degrees. And I'm not nothing. I'm not getting anything. And there was a big splash. And I I thought, you know what, that was probably a pickerel. I'm like, I'll I'll switch over to pickerel fishing. I start throwing a jerk bait. Turned out it wasn't pickerel, it was just swarming schools of landlocked salmon. And once I started looking for them, they're everywhere, dude. I mean, you just see these flashes of silver. I mean, we we're throwing. Uh, and All right, I, should we even be talking about this? Because I want to go back here next weekend. Like, what? Why are you telling this out in public? Well, I'm not saying. I didn't say where I went. And this is an example of how to give a real fishing report without blowing your spot. All right, let's see how you do this. I'm curious. Well, first, yeah. I mean, look. I posted some of the pictures. I'll post more pictures. Anyone that knows the lake already already knows doesn't mean they know where i am on the lake it doesn't matter so anyway <laughs> i don't care if you get to do it or not i invited you you didn't want to Hello and welcome to the NJ Multi-Species Podcast. I am your host, Joe Santiago, and here is my partner, Chris Pereira. Uh, I unfortunately do have pink eye in my this eye right here, so if I look kind of funny, uh, I do have to wear glasses. What happened? You uh, didn't I wash think, your hands? Well, Kronk, uh, while I was crappy fishing last night, Kronk decided to catch a pretty sizable bass. I think some disgusting, like, pickle juice came off the bass into my eye, maybe, and gave me this horrifying disease, but... You're blaming... You're blaming pink eye on bass splashing bass, into your eye? Some kind of bass juice that the bass fishermen have, uh... I don't know. I don't know how I got it, honestly. Neither one of my kids have it. I can't blame it on anyone, so I'm blaming the largemouth bass. All right. Was a big fish, though. I'm happy for Kronk. Um, Dude, watching that fishing... guy get excited when he catches fish is, I mean, it's pretty, it <laughs> it's it awesome. Is, it's great. It's the best. Uh, it's just really cool fishing with Kronk. It always is. Tarnoski loves him. I know Eddie Mackin loves him, too. But, uh, so I fished with him Sunday afternoon. It was an absolute crappy beat down. Um probably landed 40 fish i mean i have video of it every cast fish up to 12 inches i got one fish that was over 14 just barely um skillful angler i got the skillful angler pan fish and the perch so i got the whole slam the crappy the perch and the sunfish i got all three i got the perch in like the last 20 minutes on a husky jerk um so that was cool Fished with Eddie Mackin uh, Saturday morning. That was brutally cold again. Um, I know the boys from Lake Apaka, they, they landed a pretty big fish, a seven and a half pound walleye uh, the night before they were fishing at night. But uh, yeah, we put some fish in the boat with Eddie. I took Jen. Uh, it was unexpectedly cold. Again, you know, Eddie was kind of doing his exploration thing, uh, checking out some new spots. Jen ended up uh, hooked a, hooking a skillful angler-sized pickerel. Um, trying to remember what I caught. I, I caught a largemouth. Eddie caught a couple crappy. The crappy fishing actually wasn't good, Chris, at all. Like, we were, like, banking on, okay, well, we're, we, we started off throwing jerk baits. You know, we kind of said, all right, we're, th we're throwing jerk. Oh, God, I'm looking at my eye. It just looks horrifying. We're throwing yeah, I, jerk. I turned your screen off. I don't know how anyone's going to watch this episode. Oh, it's so gross, this shit. 
And the doctor was like, it's most likely going to go to the other eye, too. So I was like, oh, great. <laughs> but anyway, so we started off throwing jerk baits. Eddie had to be uh, home by 11, so we fished early. And, uh, yeah, a couple pickerel and uh, just slow, real slow fishing on the jerk baits. And we kind of had it in the back of our head that, all right, the last hour we're going to beat down on the crappy. Uh, but it wasn't good. The crappy fishing was uh, slow. And then anyway, the next day he took some clients out and beat down on the crappy. But yeah, so All right. it was an interesting weekend of fishing. I also went to the saltwater show. Uh, met a lot of cool people there. Uh, met up with Jen, who's absolutely been on fire fishing. I mean, he's on fire lately. He's i'm getting that inbox messages like who is this guy jen wong like where is he fish the snipers are ever since he posted that pike that max believes is a pickerel frankenstein fish or some shit um and i did i mean by looking at that fish the body of it does have the exact pattern of a pickerel but like fast eddie said if you see the release video you could see the head it's a pike but it is an interesting pattern, but the snipers have definitely been set out for Jen. I mean, everyone now with a computer is gunning for, you know, where is he fishing? So he's hiding now. I mean, that, that's the way it goes. And I mean, like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I've fished one this one spot where Jen likes to fish way before I even met Jen. I, I didn't catch anything there. It, it's not just because you know where someone's fishing, and he said it himself, and and we all know it, and anyone who fishes knows it. The guys who sit on the internet and go fishing like twice a month may not know it, but it, it doesn't really do you all that much good to just find out where someone's fishing and then go there and just wing it. I mean, but it's see, only... do we do we know the battle as well as them? Because like we don't really face that as much with the boats, and we don't we're not worried about it really as much. Like <clears throat> once you're right, uh, once you're kind of burned on the shore, you're you're done. I mean, that's well, it. no, I mean not necessarily because what happens is, and I'm not saying it's not annoying. But let's say, uh, you know, someone figures out where you're fishing from shore, tells a couple of people. Next thing you know, let's just say a dozen people all of a sudden think that if they go to the spot, they're going to catch some nice fish. And the next weekend you try to go there and there's all these people there. Chances are these guys that are like lurking for spots all over the Internet they're not that good at fishing. Chances are they're not going to do well there. And they may try it one other time, not do well again. Chances are they'll just fade back away into, you know. Real quick, while you're talking about looking for spots, this podcast episode is brought to you by NJFishing.com. 27 years as the leader in fishing in New Jersey and that archive is still up and running uh talk about like you know looking through these pictures for information you could go in the freshwater forum there and go through 900 pages of just endless uh, it's like a twilight zone episode of endless books uh, yeah of, and not yeah not for nothing because we're talking about like not really spot burning but that's the closest thing you can get. And a lot of the, you know, guys who post on there are careful about giving too much information away, but they <laughs> do share. And the search function, if you search a, a certain place, you'll see information. If you search a certain species of fish, you'll get a lot of information. You just have to be willing to sort through it and read through it. Nothing's nothing's easy. Nothing's I mean, realistically, really realistically not that i'm burning anything but if you really if you really wanted to know where jen wan's fishing where he's fishing 
it's most likely written somewhere in that new NJF archive. It's mentioned at least four times, probably in the, in the twenty seven years of the website. But so if you're if you're going to put in the effort to find it out and figure it out, exactly, then... you could probably find the spot that Chris caught the twenty seven inch brown trout is probably in this in that forum somewhere. That sure. thing is just like the. It's just a wormhole of endlessness. All right, let's get back to the thing. While we're while I'm talking about NJ fishing now, and I said I went to the saltwater, so I just want to show you this. This is my new Avit SX reel that Jerry Zagorski made me buy. Like he forced me to buy this. So really, yes. And if it f- breaks, Anthony Cheney's going to fix it, and uh, Jerry's going to pay for it every time it breaks. Really. Yes, so that's the deal we have have worked out with that. That's a good I bought, deal. I bought that at the Saltwater Show. What about you now? Now you had a salmon weekend, and then I invited well, you pan fishing with me, and apparently you did so well you didn't even care about me at all. So, well, you guys were going to be heading to Lake Hopakong way earlier than I was willing to get there. Plus, you guys were only fishing till eleven that day. And I was just like, I, I'm not going all the way over there for that. You just know. why you I, mentioned that, not to cut you off. At 11, when we left the pack on, Jen said, do you want to come fishing with me? And I said, no, nah, I'm going home. And that's when he went and caught that monster. monster. So You I know, could, he, he probably could have used a hand, hand dealing oh, with that fish. It, it ripped up his pointer finger. When he showed up at the show, he uh, had his whole hand was wrapped. And then you look back at the picture, it looks like his one pointer finger is just completely, it's blood. He must have had a war with that fish. Yeah, and I, then I, actually, the fish got entered into the, to the madness contest, and it was bigger than Jen's board by maybe I would say probably one inch. Jen only had a 36-inch board. Fish was probably 37 inches. Well, th- he's, uh, he wasn't expecting never, that. Of course, no. It's a, that was a unicorn for him. Um, I mean, he well, knows it. This, I'm not even saying, like, at the spot he's fishing, he was just not expecting even that species, really. No. Not that it's unheard of, but it's He's it's caught rarity. that species. That, he's caught that species before, he's told me, but it, very uncommonly. And he said, over the years, it's just gotten worse for that species. Right. So I, I, I know he wasn't really prepared to deal with that, but um, but I, I do. He, he's actually the perfect candidate for one of these net trek nets because he doesn't like to carry a lot of gear with him. But uh, net trek got... net trek is coming on later. Right. Yeah. And uh, I was just you telling me this story, and uh, and I know he doesn't <laughs> like to carry a lot of stuff with him. But these net trek necks, they they, uh, they get so compact, like full that you can flip them out. I mean, I think he's the perfect candidate for a situation like that. Jen is full bore on the skill on the skillful angler. Now he's got eight entries already. What Eddie ended up doing with that pike is just he maxed the fish out and maxed it out at thirty six inches, which I think that's a pretty fair. Uh, that's thing all to you. Do. Yeah, that's all you can do. I That's mean, if fair. your bump board isn't long enough, it's obviously longer than wherever your last mark is. But, you know, that's all you can. That's all you can be given. I think, uh, Jer, I think, uh, yeah, well, I think Jen will be buying a new bump board now just in case the on the, the there is that Rapala one that's fairly cheap, right? It unfolds to 60, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one I have. It, it folds up. It's, it's got three like pieces on a hinge and it opens, you know, folds open three times up to 60 inches. Like you're not going to catch any freshwater fish here in New Jersey. That's going to max that board out. Yeah. Uh, other fishing, uh, real quick. I mean, grab a granny. We haven't mentioned him in a while. He seems to just be miserable complaining about everything. He says F salmon, F F this, F that. Um, he's just wild trout fishing again. <laughs> just complaining. I'm not sure what John's issue is. Uh, I think he's pissed about the wind. Um, 
You, you did ask me been. about the salmon and then just start talking about other stuff, though. You realize that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I forgot about the salmon. Yeah, go back to the Anyway, salmon. like I was saying before you interrupted me, um, <laughs> my original plan was to go. That was like a 12-minute NJF commercial, basically. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, my plan was to head to like Opakong and, and Panda. I've been wanting to perch fish. Like I didn't get the ice fish for perch. I like doing it. I want to fish for perch. And my plan was to meet you guys at Lake Opakong like later in the morning. And I call you guys to see like what's going on over there. And you basically told me like, oh, it's we're, we're looking and it's it's just like. It, it it's not good. So the what was the water dirty too, and it was kind of off color. I think that was part of the biggest. But like I said, Eddie did good the next day, so it might have cleared up. Yeah, I but mean, we we did start. I you know we have to leave at eleven at ten. The fishing starts picking up. We started catching fish. But yeah, yeah go ahead. I mean, Continue with your 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 salmon. Oh yeah, a lot of time this time of year the afternoons can be better. But anyway, so I totally change gears. I grab all different uh set of rods and, and stuff, and I'm like, I'm going somewhere else. And I head out there, but I still wanted to find perch. And I I go all the way up into this shallow spot. I found the I find the warmest water I can find on the lake. And I start looking for perch, right? I'm, I'm popping a jig under a bobber. I'm trying different depths and stuff. I'm looking for the weed edges. I'm, I'm, I, I know I found the, the warmest water by at least three degrees. And I'm not nothing. I'm not getting anything. And there's a big splash and I I thought, you know what, that was probably a pickerel. I'm like, I'll I'll switch over to pickerel fishing. I start throwing a jerk bait. Turned out it wasn't pickerel, it was just swarming schools of landlocked salmon. And once I started looking for them, they're everywhere, dude. I mean, you just see these flashes of silver. I mean, we we're throwing uh and right, should we even be talking about this? Because I want to go back here next weekend. Like, what? Why are you telling this out in public? Well, I'm not saying. I didn't say where I went. And this is an example of how to give a real fishing report without blowing your spot. Right, let's see how you do this. I'm curious. Well, first, yeah. I mean, look, I posted some of the pictures. I'll post more pictures. Anyone that knows the lake already already knows. Doesn't mean they know where I am on the lake. It doesn't matter. So. Anyway, plus I don't care if you get to do it or not. I invited you. You didn't want to go. So we're, me and Katie are out there. We're throwing uh, jerk baits, uh, paddle tail, like Kitech paddle tails on jig heads. And these, these salmon are going ballistic, dude. They look like you just see shots of silver like flashing on the lures. They, it was kind of hard to get them to fully commit. Um, I'm not really sure why we tried a couple of different things, but the action was insane. And we probably landed a dozen salmon. The one, the one thing that had me kind of boggled was every time I'd see the, the ones we landed were almost uh, one was bigger around 18, 19 inches. The rest of them were in that like, uh, 15, 16 inch range. And, but I saw monster ones and every time I saw a monster one, it, it bailed out. Oh, Couldn't God. get when the big you say one. monster one. What do you mean? Monster? How I long? Mean, it's hard to tell in the water, but judging really? by what the other ones look like, I mean, talking well over 20 inches up to 25 inches. I mean, Oh, we're going back there. Yeah. Yeah. They were there, man. And, uh, did they just not- stock them recently or something? So that was another thing. I so most of the ones we caught had their uh, right, their right fin clipped in the back, and so that's how they keep track of what 
what year stock they are. I'm guessing these are from last year's stock. But I, I got to uh, That's I'll cool. probably ask. I'll ask Craig Lemon and see if if he knows uh, which fin they they uh, clipped last year. But yeah, they all seem to be of the same stocking uh, breed. That's right? in, but that's interesting though that there you saw monsters mixed in with them though. Bro, right, yeah, I mean they've been stocking for a while now, and so you know the the groups are going to mix up the sizes a little bit. I, I don't think they uh, totally stay within the size range, but yeah. Anyway, and uh, and I think that we, was Katie. That was uh, Katie's first ever salmon on a lure, right? She caught. Yeah, she caught a really big one last year uh we were floating a herring i think and this this was our first time casting for him which is i mean anyone who hasn't done that it, i mean it's yeah, pretty it's cool. cool i mean yeah, cool. usually guys will troll for them uh or use live bait in this scenario i'm not sure how live bait would have done uh i will say just to fast forward you did ask me to go fishing the next day. I, I asked you to go back and do this because I wanted to basically strike while the iron was hot. And, uh, me and Luke headed out there for Sunday. It was even windier than Saturday. Um, but Luke, I will say Luke did not get seasick. Even that's though impressive. Way, yeah. The way <laughs> I, I, I said, you're not going to get seasick. Are you? He was like, Oh, I only get seasick in salt water. I said, okay. I'm not that going was to back. That was kind of the reason I said no to the going was the wind, but then I ended up taking a kayak out anyway in the wind, which was just even just as stupid. <laughs> I was wondering, you must have got blown around because it was... I got blown all over the place, but every was... time like the wind would just stop for three minutes and give me a chance, uh, uh, the bobber jig, of course, on... I mean, I caught the one was on a jerk bait, the perch, but... I must have caught 40 crappies on the bobber jig and people continue to attack the bobber. I'm not even going to get into it, but it's just unbelievably effective. I mean, if you're, if you're in five feet of water and the crappie are sitting two feet below the surface and you want to jerk a jig at exactly two feet, you need a bobber to do that. I mean, that's how you keep it in the strike zone. Yeah, I mean, I invited Thomas on here. I mean, I thought he was just busting our balls, but I no, genuinely... he's mad. Thomas is legitimately mad. We're gonna. I would like to talk to him about it because it's an interesting. It's, it's one of the it's, reasons that I made all this shit. Because it's a it's a strange take. I thought he was just busting our balls. He kind of still is, but he genuinely hates. No, he does. No, Bobber. he does. He genuinely thinks that they are only for little kids to learn how to fish. Yes. And I just, I could not disagree more. And my argument would be, you know, bullet weights. So this is coming from a bass fisherman. He's, he's mocking uh, bobbers. And I would say, well, it's a tool right? It's a tool that you use to make fishing more effective. It's not there to make it easier. It's there. You can use it in a way that you can't do what you want to do any other way. Like, like you just said, if you want to suspend a small jig and, and a plastic that looks like a bug or a little fish, how else could you do that? A suspending jerk bait is a suspending jerk bait. That's not a jig. It's not a jig. And yeah, it's it not any given species of fish at any given time is not always going to hit one of your jerk baits that suspends at whatever this depth is you want to target. Bobber the jigging in itself is just a completely a whole nother style of fishing. Like I know we only use that mostly for crappies, but there's guys that use that top that style for a lot of stuff, uh, especially trout. It's a real effective method to catching fish. Oh, I, I've, I've used it for quite a few things. I've, you know, I like to ultralight spin fish for trout because most of the time I believe that's the most effective way to target 
these big fish here in New Jersey. Okay. And we've argued about that with the fly fishing and whatnot. But I will say, I like to drift a small jig with, uh, you know, either marabou hair or like a piece of plastic on there. And I like to free drift it. Sometimes, you know, this is not a rare occurrence. Sometime, you know, maybe one third of the time or so, I'm I'm doing this drift. I'll say if I, I see a nice hole, I'm almost confident it should hold trout. And I'm drifting a jig. Maybe I change the jig. I try a couple different jigs and I'm not getting hit. I will sometimes then pop one of those small floats, bobbers, whatever you want to call it. Something that makes that floats that attaches to your line that keeps your lure or bait at a certain depth. And I'll pop that on and I'll drift it through there a couple times again. Boom, I'll catch one or two fish. Something about keeping that lure at an exact depth through this drift triggers those fish to bite, to bite versus letting that more natural drift go through. And I mean, that, it's just a fact. It's happened way wow. too many times to deny. I, as a fly fisherman, use a strike indicator 90% of the time. I, 100% of and the that's, time. And I'm, that's a bobber. I mean, it's the same thing. Please, I don't want it to be called a bobber, but I'll put it in the same toolbox you, as a bobber. You can call it whatever the hell you want. You can call it's it the a same float, kind bobber, of uh, in strike indicator. It doesn't no, matter. No, a float is something totally different. A float is the, a float's the big long one with the two ends. Then there's a slip bobber. They're, they they're, all it, fall under the same category. We're going to do of, a bobber episode with Thomas, and we're going to discuss this, and then we're going to bring him up here and use bobbers with him. And he's going to be, his life is going to be changed. As soon as a hybrid hits this guy's jerk bait for the first time, it's like a baptism. You're a <laughs> born again. Everything well, you've caught has been erased instantaneously almost. And let me just finish my story because there is a bobber in this story. Yeah. I, I was trying to catch the panfish using a bobber along with some other things uh, that didn't work. So I had it there, you know. So we're fit. Well, I'm on the Sunday now. Me and Luke are back doing the same thing. We're going after these salmon. We're using jerk baits and paddle tails. The jerk baits worked much better the second day than the paddle tails, and vice versa the other day. But uh, we were having the same problem where the fish were kind of darting around and, and they were not fully committing. I even saw clear as day right next to the boat, I literally saw a salmon smash himself into my jerk bait like t-bone style didn't even open his mouth he headbutted it like these things watching him in the water they looked like something was like wrong with them they looked like they were like mentally ill they they Vicious. didn't they didn't know what the hell they were doing they were like spazzing out we're going was, back there next week it was and kind of day. crazy we're and, bringing live bait and bobbers and Luke started throwing this really crazy colored uh, jerk bait that actually worked really well. He and he hooked one of those bigger salmon, and he ended up losing it on a jump. But that was the biggest one. And we also ended up uh, hooking a bunch of bass. There was a bunch of largemouth in the mix, and I gotta say, for the guys that claim the largemouth fight, all you know. Like John, John grab a granny for some reason. He hates the salmon and he's miserable. He I, hates I, the I podcast. Say, he hates dude, the podcast. He hates me. He hates every, you. Every time. I don't care. He every hates time. Katie, he hates everyone. Hates my wife. No, I don't care. Every time I hooked the bass, I knew it immediately because it just felt like a snag. But. <laughs> And while the salmon would just like rip your drag off when they'd hit like a, like a rocket, but, um, the water's still cold. I'm just kind of busting balls. The, the bass are not really suited for this water temperature, but they were fairly, they were more aggressive than I thought they would be. Front, that big one that surprised us that on the video, uh, that hit a chatterbait Kronk had. We didn't see that coming. He, he caught a couple nice crappy on the chatterbait too. I was surprised. Um, I, I, I have to give a shout out to to Eddie Mackin, uh, Mackin's Rip and Lips Fishing Trips. Uh, I've been extremely lazy lately, and uh, 
you know, when Eddie kind of has like his off time when he's not doing trips, he kind of like will explore the lake and like test out new stuff and look at new areas for his clients. So he's been letting me kind of glob around on his boat. So I just been like a glob there. And I do appreciate that. And you know, we've been catching some fish and he's been finding out some even new stuff, learning. So uh, it's been really cool stuff with Eddie. Nice. And other We're, exciting news. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me I got more exciting story. news. I got, I got to just finish the story. It's the best part at the end because it has to do with what, the box. What is the story? There's a, there's, what story is this? The end of the salmon story. Uh, it involves a bobber? Yes. Okay. So towards the end of the day, me and Luke are, you know, getting these salmon all riled up. We're catching one here and there. And he lost the one big one, but we still don't have a real bit. At one point, I said, uh, you know, we ice fish for them a certain way with the little bug jigs. I had some bugs left over from the ice fishing. And I take one of the ice jigs and I put it under the bobber that I was using for the perch. And I stick a cut like I stick a spike and a mousy on there that I had just with me left over. And I have it sitting there just dangling under a bobber. Just just, you know. So a couple of salmon follow Luke's jerk bait in and I see them, they're just swarming it and he's not getting them to hit. And I take this, this, uh, little ice jig with the bugs on it under a bobber and I quickly just flip it out over to where I see the salmon chasing his swarming his jerk bait. And they immediately turn away from his jerk bait. And the one attacks the bobber, so I, I popped it. I used the bobber as like a popper. It attacked the bobber again, and then it just dropped down and just ate the bug jig. And boom, it was the biggest fish of the day. It was like 18 or 19-inch salmon. How would I have ever done that without a bobber? The only other way would be if you tied a little jig off of the back of an actual popper which would essentially be the same thing as using a bobber. And the point of the story is I just, I just don't understand how someone could be so against utilizing just such an effective tool as the bobber. Well, if Steve from Signal 11 is watching this, you'll probably see a new company with bobbers with treble hooks on them by Wednesday. Now he'll be making a new bobber lure. I'm going to make my own. Okay, so in other news, the njmultispecies.com website is finally up and running, and so is the store. You can now go on there and purchase all kinds of apparel, stuff that we don't even have. Right, Chris? Uh, there's all kinds of shit on there. Yeah, we have like the, the plain black hoodie or, or long sleeve shirt like yeah, you're wearing. There's all kinds of cool camo shirts, and there's fishing buffs, and there's all kinds of stuff you could buy on there now. Um, in other big news, we're now accepting advertisers. Um, we've taken on a few. Uh, we've obviously partnered up with Mackin, uh, and it, that's worked out well so far. So we're going to open up the floor to some other businesses, um, not just fishing, basically anything. We've been lucky enough that our social media platforms have now grown to a point where we're able to help, and uh, it also helps the podcast. So if you're interested in doing some advertising and we think that we could help you, uh, reach out to us. We'll give you an honest answer. Uh, Chris, you add anything? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, like you said our social medias and stuff have uh, been growing uh, exponentially basically. And we're putting a lot of time and effort into this podcast, uh, you know, putting a lot of time and effort into networking and, and stuff. And we do love fishing, but we also need ways to fund what, what we're doing. And so that's why we decided to open up, you know, our platforms and the podcast, to uh, for advertisers and, uh, we, we know we can help people. So, you know, we're, we're ready to team up with, uh, it is now available. Uh, 
I guess now we could get to our guest. Our next guest is from NetTrek. This guy created a net that basically folds up into the smallest foldable net that I've seen so far. Uh, and the price of it's pretty ridiculous. When we first saw the price of this net, we thought it was junk just based on price. Well, yeah, and then that's what people, you know, on the internet, you see all kinds of crap. So that's people's initial reaction. And, and that's why I literally had <laughs> made him send us one. I didn't make him send us one. See, the thing is, I I talked to him about it and I explained yeah, our talk. whole thing. And, uh, you know, I said, look, we can't just let anyone advertise on here. You know, I, nothing personal. I just, I haven't heard of you yet. He's like, oh, you know, we're, we're, I'm fairly new and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, turns out I I had literally had an almost two hour conversation with this guy, Jerry, and, uh, we kind of both sold each other. He convinced me that he stands behind this product and it was worth checking out. And he sent one over and uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. So and, was I. That's why he's here now. He well, he's coming now. But yeah, yeah I was surprised by and, it too. Uh, so. It's you know, it's not. We really want to support local businesses. There's no local innovative net company, but this is still a small business. It's just Jerry. Jerry is the owner founder. He puts the nets together himself. Uh, so we're glad to work together and promote another small business, even though it's not local. Um, it's yeah, if still- you need it, if you're in the market for a net, uh, especially for a trout net, check these out. But are we able to, is Jerry ready to come on? Yeah, yeah, we get Jerry on right now. Okay, let's get Jerry from NetTrek. Okay, so we have our guest in here. This is Jerry from NetTrek. Jerry's been making NetTrek uh, for, they've been in development for five years. They've been available to the public for three years now. Jerry, it's nice to finally have you in person here on the NJ Market Species podcast. Great to see you guys. Thanks for the invite. What's going on, Jerry? Now, uh, so Jerry and I have spoke before, and if I could just, I'm just going to tell the story real quick, Jerry, because it's kind of interesting. So when we started our Facebook page, you know, people going on Facebook and exploring and stuff would just pop in. Uh, Jerry found our page and, you know, put one of his NetTrek uh, advertisements on there. So I I messaged him and I said, hey, you know, uh, you know, nothing personal, but we, we don't let, you know, people we don't know or with products we don't know advertise on our on our page. And, uh, you know, Jerry understood and he sent me some information. And as Joe will tell you, I'm skeptical about everything. Um, but uh, me and Jerry spoke. We, we even set up a meeting and we, and, we, and we spoke for quite a while. And by the end of it, I was basically like, you know what, Jerry, you sound awesome. And if you stand behind this product, I want to give it a try. And Jerry sent one over, and I gave it a try. And and these, and we'll get into it. But these nets are pretty cool. They're they're totally innovative. There's nothing that I've seen really like it. And uh, yeah, that's the short version. Uh, we basically gave it the double thumbs up. We ordered a couple more. We ordered, you know, I ordered one for Max and Kevin because they want it. They want to use it. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty cool addition to to our fishing tools, to be honest with you. Yeah, I hope so. It, it should be. It is for most people who get their hands on them. What yeah. gave you the idea uh, to uh, the one that I saw uh, Chris using was the one that's the waiting staff and sure. the net in one. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what gave you the idea, and then? When you get this idea in your head now, how do you actually make it materialize into an actual product? Yeah, good good question. Well, that that's a 20-month answer, but the short version is I travel uh, up and down the Rockies to fish, among other places. And on one of those trips on the South Platte, I have a friend up there, 
he and I were waiting in South Platte. And he happened to position himself upstream out of my visual eyesight. So we knew we were there together. I always carry a safety whistle, uh, but I couldn't see him. Well, long story short, I got into a little current, stepped on a slippery rock or in a hole or something, fell down. And that was the first and only experience I've had was falling down and getting water in my waders. It's not something you want to do. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in, at the time I was in my uh, late 60s and, and uh, retired or about to retire. And I said, there's got to be a better way. I, I did not have a staff at that time. I fished with a rod and reel and a net. So I fell down, cut my head open, got my waders flooded, and said, "This this sucks. This is not a good thing because that water's pretty cold, and you never, you know, it can be really dangerous." So anyway, it ain't fun if the water's warm either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that led me to say, "I got to. I'm too old for this shit. I got to do something different, and I got a waiting staff." And the waiting staff was helpful. Uh, honestly, it was helpful. But I had a staff, a net, a rod and reel, and I still only had two hands. And I said, there's got to be somebody that's got something that, you know, solves this problem. So I searched the web, and to my surprise, there was not. And that began the development process. I, I had a net. I bought some new nets. I experimented with different kinds of nets. And what kind of background? What what kind of background did you have before you did this? Uh, my career was uh, actually in uh, electronics. I spent my most of my career in electronics. I've done some entrepreneurial things on the side, but my working career was electronics. And in that, I was uh, involved in electronic and electrical connectors, the things that plug things together. And so those are electromechanical designs, right? And and I worked with all the all the top companies in terms of development of new connector technology, from aerospace to computers to telecom, you name it. So I was familiar with working uh, electromechanical designs, and I had I'm not an engineer. I'm basically a sales and marketing guy at heart. Uh, but I said, you know, this is, I can do this. So I just started working on it. And after about 20 months, uh, traveling up and down the Rockies, fishing locally and so forth, I would talk to guys like you. I'd talk to guys on the stream, other fishermen like me. And every time they'd give me a little tidbit, I'd tweak it. And over 20 months, I finally came home after one of my trips and I walked in the house and I said to my wife, the guys, you know, guys really like this thing. You know, people on the water think this is pretty cool. And she said, well, you know, now I'm retired. So for you, for you who aren't retired, uh, the ladies kind of get tired of you around the house, you know, <laughs> so she says, she was happy to see me go fishing, but she said, when are you going to do something with it? And that was, that was the trigger. That was a trigger when I said, I really got to lock this design down, source it, and uh, rock and roll. And that's what happened. I announced Perfect. January 1st, two years ago, the, on the website to the public, the first design, which might be the net you saw, Joe. Uh, it was the tailwater. That was the first one. It was ideal for mountain stream fishing, hiking, backpacking, and uh, the size trout we typically get. Yeah, so... See, Joe, when he wanted to do something constructive with fishing, he invented nets. We come on here and talk to people about fishing. It's an art form. Yeah, you know, you do your own thing. Now, I think the biggest draw of this <clears throat> net trek um, to me uh, is the compact of it. These things fold up incredibly small and open up into... Because I'll be honest, when you first came into my group and I saw it, I said, I saw the price tag and I immediately said, oh, this is a piece of shit. How did this guy get in here? <laughs> and then as we actually like, you know, investigated it and looked at it and got our hands on one, like Chris said, I mean, 
the thing is actually impressive, and at the price, it's really impressive. I appreciate um, that. I was the, I I was the, totally honest with Jerry when I had this meeting with him too, and I kind of said the same thing. I just said you did. <laughs> As, I mean, as, I always go by as soon as I see something that's skeptic, you know, it's kind of ch- too cheap to be true. I just, oh, piece of shit. And just well, that's it. That's and that's how people I mean, I kind of was playing devil's advocate, but I'm like that, too. So I kind of was honest about it. I said, you were you you go. If I, I said I went on, I went on the website. I saw these nets. They look awesome. Then I see the price is so reasonable People's initial reaction is going to be like, these can't be durable. These can't be quality. Yeah. And I'll be honest, and I didn't really tell Jerry this. I mean, look, when I got the net, I didn't try to break it, Jerry, but uh-huh. I was not gentle with it. I'm not sure I'm believing that based on what you're saying, but okay, good. Put it through I, the patience. Look, I, I didn't try to break it, but I was not gentle with it. I used it. <laughs> As as if it was a fishing tool, I go through a lot of I I climb little cliffs and shit to go sure. fishing, and yeah. I I use that staff. I leaned on it, you know. I I if I needed to do something, I tossed the net down on some rocks and I picked it back up and went about my way. I sure. flipped it open. I use it like I was not gentle with it, and and I just want you know one of the reasons we wanted to have you on here is because we think people on the internet who don't who know your company haven't touched the net their their initial thought is going to be like for that price how am i getting something durable and so i mean if anyone wants to listen to us we can back it up and i know you back it up as well which is one of the other big things you know that i mean it's really interesting it's just, so I could take that and say, great, time for a price increase, you know, but that is not my, that, that's not my attitude at the moment. Uh, in, in, you know, Joe, when you asked how, what was my background, one of the things uh, embedded in your back, my background, when you work with the companies like Boeing and Hughes Aircraft and uh, Apple Computer and IBM and stuff, there is no compromise for quality. It, it doesn't exist. So that's kind of ingrained in some of my upbringing from a career perspective. And remember, originally I was just doing this for myself. So I wasn't trying to make something on the cheap. <laughs> I was trying to make something that would make me safe. You know, and if it failed, it's my fault. It's my bullshit product. It's my design failure. So in the early days, when the website first went up, I posted a video, which is still there on the about page, I think, but it's too long. It's about 14 minutes long. People don't want to watch 14 minutes of that shit, but long story short, it's still there. And it talks to this issue. And the issue is, If you start with quality materials, you have a solid foundation to end up, you know, assuming your design's halfway decent, you're going to end up with a high quality part. And and the staff in this case, which you won't see advertised, I don't think, by other waiting staff companies. I could be wrong, but this is aircraft aluminum, 7075 aircraft aluminum by design. Now, you you go look at some of the popular waiting staff designs. I don't think you're going to see that. Joe, okay. what's, well, j- see, just by coincidence, Joe, before, in maybe a week or two before you showed up uh, on our page, Joe took a pretty nasty spill wow. trout fishing here in New Jersey. It's a hilarious video. Oh, you should check it it's out. It's absolutely <laughs> not hilarious at all. I'll be I'll, I'll honestly straight. I, I mean, straight up front. I'm your stand. When it comes to trout fishing, I'm usually just your typical douchebag fly fisherman. I'm one of those dressed in all the Sims and Orvis shit. Uh, of course, I have to have the nomad. I have a uh, fish pond nomad mid length. Of course, net. 
of I think it's almost two, what two fifty, two hundred and fifty. I bucks think it's maybe a hundred eighty dollars and I was looking okay. at it. Uh it doesn't fold next nope. year's. It doesn't turn into a waiting staff. Although the, they say you can use it for that. Eh, not mine. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm uh, just the basket, he's, he's not that short. <laughs> the, the, bas- the baskets on yours are interchangeable. On the this one, they're not. So, and this one does not fold up at all. So, it. I mean, it does look nice, but when it comes to the versatility category, uh, the, I haven't seen anything like Netrek yet. Yeah, I mean, I. That's music to my ears. Honestly, I mean, it was. When I when I fish, I started out because I was a lake fisherman. I lived in California, Florida, Chicago. I fished Canada, you know, whatever, but mostly lake. So New Mexico is a new experience to me. New Mexico, Colorado, Rockies, and really beautiful as you probably can imagine. And the water is just fantastic when you get to it. But you gotta get to it. And that means hiking the trails up in the Alpines. You, you know, I'm fishing anywhere between seven and 10,000 foot elevations. I'm camping and, and shore trailing and waiting. Well, when I fish, I don't look, I'm not 25 years old anymore. I don't want to carry a backpack and a whole fly shop with a gear on me. You guys, you have your Sims and all your fancy stuff. That's great. Not me. Talk I don't do that. <laughs> oh, he's all dressed up, too. And he's wearing <laughs> Orvis weight. He's got the same waiters I do. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's fine. Hey, Orvis has been around since, what, the 1800s. They're, they're definitely a brand. Uh, so, but I carry uh, a fly, not a fly box, because I spin. I do carry a little fly. But I carry a, a tackle box about yay big, maybe two a uh, pair of forceps, a pair of nippers, and that's it. So adding this to my pack, if you will, it's important that it's light. So I looked at carbon fiber very seriously. And, you know, the beauty of the fish pond and the Orvis and some of the other carbon fiber nets are, I mean, they're, they're works of art, man. They are really nice looking nets. And, uh, but I was care. I, I carry about form fit function, you know? So I said, let me, my first development in some of the waiting staffs, I prototyped, uh, carbon fiber and the carbon fiber poles are extremely nice, but they technically aren't as strong. They only weigh about two or three ounces less and they cost about four times the price. So I didn't see the value in that. And, and so that's the carbon fiber piece, but it's all around weight and easy compact carry. So for me, when I'm traveling, I want it just small and compact and functional as I can get it. And that's why you see the design as it is today, because it, I don't want a big basketball hoop on my back catching branches and shit when I'm, you know, bushwhacking through uh, these trails. I guess that's why I don't see any boat nets on your uh, site. You don't mm-hmm. make boat nets. Mm-hmm. You make oil. Well, that, 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 go ahead. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm j- just looking through your stuff. I, I don't see, like, any boat nets. They're mostly all wading and packable nets. You're correct in that. Now, the... The variant I would throw into that is I kayak. So for me, a kayak is my boat, right? Yeah. Now, uh, once again, you know, what, you know, a lot of guys float out here. I don't know if you see guys in float tubes out your way. Occasionally, yeah. Not yeah. Too much, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's a group. It's a niche, right? And yeah, so it's just weird people. You just... <laughs> <laughs> they're fishermen they're all weird <laughs> so uh, so so anyway the point you is no you're, <laughs> you're space contra- constrained right you right. don't want a lot of stuff in that flow tube you don't these guys that go out and fish tournaments on kayak and have six rods and all this stuff good for them I, I, i'm happy for them not me one rod 
one tackle box, one net. And uh, my net that evolved as the kayak net, which was just, uh, it was just announced in a, a guy near you guys, actually, uh, USA Kayak Fishing Magazine. Are you familiar with that operation? Mm, he's a, di- he's a digital magazine. I, I believe, I, I don't want to say it in case it's wrong, but uh, I I think that's, Roy. I think they used to have a forum, at, if it's who I'm thinking of. Like, I don't want to say the name in yeah. case it's wrong, but I do believe okay. I've heard of them, yes. Okay, well, anyway, similar to you guys, you know, I'm always reaching out and vice versa, and one thing led to another, and I hooked up with him, and uh, and he, he wanted to, uh, like you, you know, get some firsthand experience before he became uh, interested in advocating. So long story short, the last, just within the last month, he put out the second or spring edition or something, and he could only get a new product release in because he hasn't had time on the kayak. It's winter, ice, not seasonally right yet, but he has some nets. The point is this. The waiting staff is not for everybody, even good young fishermen who don't, you know, have, have good knees and hips. They want a net, but they don't want a staff. Okay, I get it. So this net, the flip series, which I uh, released January 1st, uh, is a telescopic handle. The handle goes from like 20 or 22 inches to 32 inches. That's it. But then you have a net on the end, which is 13 or 16 inches. So your total length is about 48 inches with the same net, Joe, that you have on the waiting staff. Same series, small, medium, large. I, I don't have one. The one, every the one, one every, you saw that, every, I, that oh, the I one. Had. Everyone got one but me. I, I'm the only one that doesn't have one. Well, because you had just recently bought yourself a fish pond net before, so you're but good, that right? Doesn't fold up. The tough shit. Uh, right. So you, when we film videos, I think I think, can... I, I think you need to work on this, Joe. I'm gonna. You need to maybe maybe they'll you know maybe that tackle shop will take a return. Now there is a uh, there is a code. What for, do you think? There's a code to get 10% off, correct? From, uh, or is it, what is it, 10% off? Yeah, we're we're going to, we teamed up with Jerry, and uh, we're going to, anyone who wants to check out these nets, buy one, check it out for themselves. Uh, we're, we're teaming up with Jerry, and we're offering a 10% off coupon. It's NJMP10. Real easy. NJ Species yep. 10. So NJ. MP ten. That's yeah. It. No, no space. Yeah, yeah. Should NJ, be caps. MP no 10. space. I think ten percent right. yeah. net track. If That's you all. go yeah. to the, the website, the website is I don't want to screw it up, Jerry. The website is just nettrack.com or yeah, yeah. N e t r e k k dot com. Nettrack dot com. And I will I'll, say. Make sure you put the extra K in there because there is some kind of like video game or something. The first time, yeah, I there's some... the <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for the 10 percent. Uh, I thought yeah. they were too cheap already. Now there's another 10 percent off, so I would buy one. Well, you know, I, I think, I think, I think, you know, there's a price increase coming. The, I, just I, listen, I don't blame you. With the way just, the economy is now, who knows? So we, we, we got a 10% discount for our listeners and stuff. And then I'll buy we, one all, now we also increase. caused the price increase coming soon. So I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, yeah, I, so. can't, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast. Is there anything else that you want to plug before we let you go? You uh, that, yeah. Yeah. I, w- I would just say this in, in the world of social media, which is not my historic forte. I think there's some value to folks who, I, I don't know the right terminology. I think it's just sharing or circulating with friends, uh, the web page or the discount or what have you. So I'm not, I'm not that skilled at that kind of stuff. And I am, I am kind of a one man band. But I do recognize that things like this, the stuff you guys are doing is important to guys like me. 
and it it gets the word out to people who would otherwise never know about me you know in in a unique way to your followers your listeners which i definitely appreciate so for those who are interested you know my philosophy has been just because when i go shopping for my gear a little bit unlike you joe i'm not looking to spend all my fishing money on the gear <laughs> so I, I i'm looking at a little different value proposition if you will and so i i look at nets and i say oh jesus christ why does a net cost 200 or 250 dollars that to me is just didn't seem right and so i consciously said i want to bring a real good quality net a lot of innovation and versatility for under a hundred bucks, no more than a hundred bucks. I think a hundred bucks is a fair number for anybody can afford a hundred bucks. If they're fishing, they'll find a reason to spend a hundred bucks. So, uh, so I just pass that along to say, I'm not looking to increase the price. I am looking to increase the volume. That that's it. That's true. And so right now I'm sitting in my car because I'm traveling on the way for a fishing trip. <laughs> and so in, in my suitcase, my wife and I are heading to Florida and I'm going to do some bass fishing, some kayak fishing, some snook fishing. And in my suitcase, I have a flip and dip net for my kayak. And I have a larger wading staff, mostly for the length of the handle. Not that I'm going to be uh, wading per se, we'll be on a boat, but mostly for that long reach on the handle, it does make a nice boat net. And uh, so I encourage you, whether it's kayaking, boating, canoeing, you, you pick it. The versatility is the thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to say before, before we got together or right afterwards, there was a fella in uh, two stories, I'll tell you, and then I'll let you go. So there's a fella out west in the Pacific Northwest who writes a magazine he's the editor of a magazine and he's a guide and it's called trout and steelhead.net another digital magazine and uh he, I, he called me up one morning and uh i kind of out of the blue and and you know I, he introduced himself and so forth and he said I, I'd, I'd like you to tell me more about this net you have so we went through that similar to what joe uh, pardon me uh, what chris and i went through and the next thing I know, he says, you know, I'm doing something that I've never done before. He said, I've just finished my write-up for the top five trout and steelhead nets. Now, you guys do a little steelhead, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I, you know, I know there's a group of kind of pockets of the country. I haven't fished steelhead, but I know there's a few pockets. One's in Pennsylvania. And the other one is the Pacific Northwest, of course. And then you guys, I guess, have some. Anyway, ours I've are never in done New this. York. Ours are New uh, York. We live in New Jersey that runs in New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he says, I've never done this before, but I just finished my write-up for my magazine of the top five nets for Trout and Steelhead for 2024. He said, I called to tell you, I've created number six for you. So I'd limit it to five, but I've created number six because I never had to worry about innovation in fishing nets. He says, this is the most innovative net I have ever seen. So if you look up trout and steelhead.net and their top five fishing nets, you're going to see the, you know, the classic guys, you know, the, the ones that are the big brands. And then you're going to see uh, introduction of a number six ranking and that's net track. So that's, that was kind of fun. That's awesome. And yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And there's another fella in Pennsylvania. He's more or less my age, retired guy, steelhead guy. And, uh, he and I connected at some point. Well, anyway, he had he he purchased a nut and uh, he said to me, "I want to I want to help you promote this thing, man. This thing is great." I said, "Well, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I have no I have no restrictions." 
And so long story short, he's not an internet guy. He, he's, 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 he's an older generation that doesn't get on the web much. And so I just posted something on my site, which is netrek.com or on Facebook, it's netrek and Instagram it's netrek. But it, his name is Rodney and he's in Pennsylvania. And he just sent me this through two or three late night texts the other day. And long story short, he just tells it like it is. <laughs> he just tells it like it is. And like you, uh, Chris, he said, you know, I'm 215 pounds. I put everything I can on this net. I've tried to push it to its limits. And this thing is as solid as a rock. So I'll just leave you with that. And the final is for anybody watching this who Googles or tries to search Netrek. There's one guy in particular that really did a nice video. His his site is Fishing Jack. His name is Jack. He is a guide on the San Juan, which is world-class trout fishing water here in New Mexico, Four Corners. He did something that was really great. He takes out his two favorite nets and walks you through why they're his favorites. And then he reviews the net trek net. I'll leave it at that. You guys watch that. It'll be a lot of what you're familiar with now that you've had your hands on it. It's it's one of those things that I I say there's just a certain wow factor when people get their hands on this net. They like you, they're kind of in disbelief a little bit and then they get yeah, it. I agree. And yeah. uh they go, Whoa, whoa, man. So last thing I'll tell you. There's a question for you guys and your listeners. When is was the last time you bought a fishing net, even your nice, pretty carbon fiber two, 180 $200 net, when was the last time you bought a net that came with a diagram and instructions? <laughs> I, I have one. I have one. Yeah, you got one because you bought a net track net. <laughs> No, this, but, this, this net is is full of features i mean it's it's really cool i i did check out that video that you just talked about because you did send it to me uh joe will have to take a look at it it is a, it's a cool video and it's bit after you've already had the net you basically are just listening to someone saying what you're already thinking but for someone right. who's thinking about you know getting a new net and and also just the the telescopic weighting staff with the bigger net and stuff that tailwater net the one that I have that's the, the tailwater is the medium the tailwater is the medium the outfitter is the big one right right um that that's the one that's your most expensive net and that's just the ninety nine ninety nine or whatever it is the <laughs> outfitter is ninety nine ninety nine yep the flip and dip ones the smaller ones without the weighting staff those yeah. Those are much less in those are much more inexpensive. I mean, what are those? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're like sixty nine or seventy five or in that range. I mean, something like that. I think right now, the but biggest, now we got ten percent off though. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, absolutely you got ten percent off, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> and by the way, since I'm going fishing, I'm gonna be gone for about three weeks. But that doesn't stop shipments. Orders are still shipping. The difference is I usually ship things within 12 to 24 hours this couple of weeks while i'm gone shipments are going to happen on tuesdays and fridays so you, you wait a couple of days before they go out the door awesome and you, you're basically running this operation you're, i mean yourself it's not you don't have a factory or anything this is this is no you. no i i touch every net i i specify components i source them i procure them sadly you know if anybody's listening that's an American source of this stuff. I'd love to source it in America, but the shit's just not, you can, I can't find anybody making the stuff in America. Nah, yeah, so it's Asia, you know, sad, but true. Uh, and I don't think the other nets, by the way, the carbon fiber nets, uh, I don't think they're made in America either. My no. Most, you know, most so. things are not, um, you know, like you said, it's just becoming almost impossible to hundred percent source things in America, but, at least you can say you are putting them together. You are assembling them here in America. You're 
personally touch yep. I I can stand behind the fact that you stand behind the Nets because you know I know you do. So I do indeed. I'm the man. You got an issue? Call me. <laughs> well, there's, no, there's no there's no there's no corporate overhead to uh, explain to me what the rules are. My rules are make a good product, get it at a fair price, get it to guys like you and your listeners. And if you got a question, I'm here to answer your question. And if you're not happy with it, I'm going to make you happy or give you your money back. Awesome. I, I, you can't beat that. Jerry, we appreciate you coming on so much. Uh, hopefully, we're we're able to actually help you sell some nets, uh, and hopefully, our guys and girls will use them. Uh, and it's that's terrific. all I could say. Thank you. Well, yeah. we're, ready. we're ready for trout season here. And and uh, cheers. Thank you so much. Uh, cheers, man. Cheers, Adios. Jerry. Uh, it's been a Have pleasure. Have a fun trip. Have a fun trip. Catch some fish. Go, go catch some fish. Absolutely. All right, man. Later, buddy. Later, Bye. man. Chris, who's the guest next week? So next week uh, we have Mike. I don't want to mispronounce. It's either Alvin or Avon. Let me pull it up real quick. I always forget to be ready for this. Oh, he's um, a, he's the guide, right? He is. I don't have his background, but he. Remember when the trout discussions were happening? Oh yeah, he made the map. Yeah, so he was kind of doing his own research, I guess you want to call it. Uh, not, it's not Alvin, it's Avon, Mike Avon. Sorry, I remember that. I so, think he's like a guide or a bow fisherman. He's something. I, I don't remember he's something. Special. I'm not totally sure about his background. We'll get all that by the time it, for the episode. All I know he's is a guide on the Delaware or something. Okay, he's he's coming on to talk trout fishing basically uh you know the whole thing where new, the state of new jersey stopped stocking brook trout and brown trout uh not that long ago for two different reasons i guess uh, they're yeah, not we're not getting either one back but we'll get into all that and trout season will is coming soon so you know we'll get into the trout talk and you know the way we roll we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants so who knows? So we're actually opening that can of worms next episode, the trout thing, because that's just going to be that's going to be two hours long of me just probably breaking my computer. Uh, yeah, I mean, OK, oh, wonderful. Right. so if anyone sees this episode and wants to chime in now on the Jersey trout stocking, uh, now's your chance. Uh, yeah, feel, feel free to as usual. Yeah, feel free to send us an email. Uh, we'll put a post online. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching this episode. We will be back next week. Uh, good luck fishing. And suffer Chris, for the suffer. fish. Suffer for the fish. There you go. Bobber mug. All right. <laughs>